Welcome to the Kyber Show, Episode 7. We're covering Week 3 of Season 11 in this episode. We have another fight with a low-star Admiral Piet, and an excellent match with 3PO and Chewie, or as I call them, or him, Chupio. This is the third quarter of the championships, and there are fewer and fewer failures, I've noticed. I'm still watching about four or 500 fights a week. <clears throat> Um, fewer and fewer failures as folks are generally confident with the teams they're using and have been practicing with them in the previous weeks. It still makes for some very interesting viewing, so let's get into the fights. Fight number one is Thrawn, Vader, Admiral Piet, Watt, and Fallen Bastille Sean versus Rey with Malak and Holdo, Resistance Hero Finn, and Resistance Hero Poe. This is one of the more difficult Ray teams to counter, and in this particular counter, it relies on Thrawn being tanky enough to survive both Finn and Poe hits, which is helped by the Zeta on Fallen uh, Bastilla. Uh, turn order on the team is on your team is critical to make sure that the sequencing for Watt second tech and Vader and Fallen Bastilla all work in the way that you want. Um, it's also important to check the speeds of the opponents Finn and Poe to find out when they're going to move in sequence as well. Let's see how it goes. All right, the fight starts here with Shield Generator going to Thrawn, and let's take a moment to pause. A lot happens here in the first few moves. So first of all, Thrawn is quite tanky with a plus 50% defense and tenacity from Sith Appress Apprentice from Bastilla Shan, Fallen, um, as well as the foresight he gets. So Ray moved first and gave lifeblood to Poe, and then Resistance Hero Finn was next, and he always uses Strength of Will, and if Thrawn is a target, he will always target Thrawn first. He also will always swap turn meter with Resistance Hero Poe, who will take a turn immediately, and again, will always target Thrawn if possible. Um, he uses Blaster Bravado to try and stun and inflict buff immunity. This allows Thrawn, due to his leader, leadership legendary strategist, to get 20% turn meter for each of the debuffs, whether he suffers them or whether he resists them. And hence, due to turn meter overflow, he will immediately take the next turn. So, he goes, directly fractures Ray, and then Finn, well, basic from Piet, and then Finn uses his AoE and again targets uh, Thrawn. He tanks like crazy, Watt gives weapon tech to Vader, FBS targets Holdo, and now Vader goes through immediately, uses Calling Blade on Malak kills him, so now Vader can get the turn meter from the weapon tech, and now goes for a for a force crush targeting Finn, now just going around the table building up stacks of Admiral's, um, Admiral's Trap and one shots Holdo. That's great because it removes the critical avoidance that she gives to resistance allies when she is not taunting. So, now he's going around using basics. Admiral's Trap is used on Thrawn. Um, so Thrawn will always be targeted now, because he has Mark, as well as Offense Up for two turns. General, another Force Crush on Ray. Swap Turn Meter back to, to Vader, I'm sure. And then at this point, it's just getting Merciless Massacre up again. So one more turn. Using Grad Nettle's command, or maneuver rather, some more debuffs on Ray from Fallen Bastilla. Seeing how many she has now, quite a few. The more on her, the better for the Culling Blade. So it's a question here whether Thrawn will, or Vader will go before Ray goes into her ultimate. It's going to be close. Okay, he goes into Merciless Massacre. 
Now using basics to build up stacks of Admiral's Trap again. That was a big basic. And now here we go with five stacks. So it's 6% each, that's 30% more offense. And using Calling Blade on Ray, this should be no problem taking her down, especially if she crits. If he crits, that's one of the things now with this counter that you see a lot more. Uh, you see a different modding on Vader because rays often have critical avoidance and or tenacity sets, and especially tenacity crosses. It's not guaranteed. Uh, not a crit. 278k basic, and the fight's basically over now. Awesome fight, but you'll see more offense heavy Vaders. Um, without relying as much on getting the critical chance up due to the, the stacking that you're going to get from Piet. Great fight. Just clean up from here on out. Fight number two is Darth Treya, Darth Nihilus, Darth Sion, Watt, and Nest versus Kylo Ren Unmasked, Kylo Ren, First Order Executioner, First Order Stormtrooper, and First Order Officer. This is not actually an easy match. Uh, there are not a lot of assists from the First Order team. They do gain a lot of buffs, so their offense is lower, but not a lot of assists to naturally lower their, to naturally damage them. Um, the key really is going to be to kill Kylo Ren, as his AoE will probably be doing a lot of damage to this majority G12 team. The only G13 on the team is Darth Sion. Um, the <clears throat> Kylo Ren and Mass team also gains a lot of turn meter, so you have to be careful of that when you're choosing who to isolate and target. Let's see how it goes. All right, and the first move obviously is Shield Generator to Darth Sion. Makes sense. And the whole First Order team goes now. They're pretty fast, and the TM generation... Let's pause for a moment here. The TM generation from Kylo Ren is significant. All right, so the second choice of tech for Watt is not actually as simple as it seems. The, the easy choice, you could say, is Darth Nihilus to speed up his Annihilates, because that's the way you're going to be taking out the first few threats, for sure. Um, however, there is an argument to be made for Emphis Nest as well. Um, she ignores taunts, so with her sudden impact, she can apply stuns. And there's a decent amount of buffs on the opponent's team. So she would be getting some stacking offense there as well. You could even think about applying it to Treya. So with her basic, she'd be dealing, um, applying the debuffs that Scion's probably going to have for most of the fight. Uh, but the main two choices are Nihilus or Enfys Nest, depending on how she's modded, whether slow and tenacious or more DPS focused. Let's see how it goes. So he does actually choose to apply the weapon tech to Darth Nihilus here. That makes sense. Doesn't really do anything for his damage, but it absolutely will help with making sure he takes more turns, especially given how how quickly this uh, Kylo Ren team seems to be modded. Now he does his first AoE. Sion's really taking a beating here. Now, there's really only one choice to isolate. No one else has taunt. And now Nest uses kinetic charge and doesn't land anything. Maybe she is DPS focused. The counterattacks are convenient. Okay, best to remove the debuffs from the first order executioner there actually. And now the med pack should go to Treya to keep her alive. To nest and set, that doesn't make sense. Kylo Ren's doing quite a bit of damage. It's going to be a problem. Oh, and Sion has heal immunity on him as well. This is definitely uh, going to be a difficult fight. Okay, let's pause here a moment. Who do we annihilate? There's really... Well, you could annihilate two different characters. Kylo Ren or First Order Executioner. Um... It'll really determine here how many banners you want for the fight. If you annihilate either anyone other than either of those, you're going to be losing a lot of banners. But I think the clear choice is Kylo Ren, seeing the damage that he's putting out with his with his AOE. 
um, with his lash out. Uh, he definitely should be annihilated so he can so you can protect your team. Cyan's doing a pretty good job of uh, soaking up the hits. And Watt's turn will come up soonish, and he can cleanse Scion um, from the healing immunity. But let's see what he does. So he goes as, goes for Kaloran Unmasked. Both Nest and Nihilus himself have the ability with their basics to remove uh, buffs. Now we trade Saber Storm on Kylo Ren. It's not so smart. Took the buff off of Fox there. Oh, look at how hard he is hitting. And he gets countered by Nest, which only boosts his damage as well. That's tough. Another counterattack. And Trey is almost gone. Nihilus is moving quite quickly, though, with weapon tech. That, that's helpful. Another hit on uh, Kylo, just boosting his damage. The counterattacks don't help. And there goes Treya. And now with the other Annihilate taking out Kylo Ren, should be a pretty easy... Yeah, held by Hatreds there on Scion. And the rest of the fight just going to be a cleanup. Fox doesn't do enough damage to uh, to break through Scion. So, this is a good win, for sure. It's not an easy fight. But it could have been quite a few more banners if Kylo Ren was annihilated first. The rest of this is just clean up. Nice win. Fight number three, the fight of the week, is Commander Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Chewbacca, C-3PO, and Chupio versus Darth Revan, Darth Malak, Fallen Vasil Shan, HK-47, and Sith Empire Trooper. This is a tricky fight, all about killing the entire DR team as quickly as possible. Uh, the CLS team has a lot of damage, boosted quite a bit by 3PO and Chewie and their stat sharing for Rebels. The assists make a, a big difference. The main challenge is to be aware of the death mark that Commander Luke will get and Malak's taunt. The timing and target selection makes a big difference. Let's see how it goes. All right. The fight starts. Bastille Sean Fallen is always the first target. If Corrupted Battle Mutation goes, it's 60% less crit chance. And counter chance horrible for the team. All right. Let's pause right here. Um, Darth Revan used Insanity, applied fear to everybody. Malak, with his basic, did dispel Luke's fear, but his cooldowns are increased, so as you can see, he can't do anything except using a basic on Sith Empire Trooper. He does generate a lot of turn meter from this, though, because it is unique, it binds all things. Um, and because he's still in his basic stance, Learn Control, it's dated, is giving him 10% turn meter each time an alley is hit. So now we're going to look at the turn meter of Luke. If he didn't have the learn control, he would not be going before um, Darth Revan and or Darth Malak. So this is important because it gives him a, a time, a turn, to use call to action and to kill somebody else on this team um, out from behind the taunt of Sith Empire Trooper. So this is very important because he should move before Darth Revan uses his Force Storm ability and apply shock. Um, the four storm will cause counterattacks, and it's better if the counterattacks go on Malak theoretically. Um, but it's also important to kill somebody before, if possible, before Darth Revan uses that ability. So let's see what happens. So he's going after HK, just totally knocks him out. All the counterattacks there kills Sith Empire Trooper, and now they go on Darth Malak. And let's pause here again for a moment. Um, Darth Malak's first um, Jaws, Jaws of Life activation occurred, so he did a drain life on Chewbacca. And now 3PO has a choice of who to apply Confuse to. Uh, his baffling trick, basic. It may not seem a big deal with five people alive versus only Revan and Malak, but Darth Revan's um, villain unique 
which is triggered when he goes below 50% health, that hasn't occurred yet. So it'll drop Darth Malak below his 75% health threshold and give him an additional 35% crit avoidance, defense, uh, tenacity, and health steal. So if he's taunting when this happens, you've really slowed down everything on the team. So in this case, it's probably better to apply the Confuse to Darth Malak. The downside is that Chupio um, assists and crits him. Uh, he would be um, feared due to Malak's gnawing tear unique. Um, that's not really a bad thing, though, because the goal is to kill Darth Revan uh, and not so much Malak at this stage. Malak is saved for last. So the less you um, you hit him, in which case you, you use Baffling Trick to apply Confuse, so he can't taunt. Let's see what happens. So he does apply it to Darth Revan. Now we get uh, Shining Distraction, some protection up. Chewbacca hits Darth Revan. He goes below the threshold. Malak takes a turn. Death marks on Commander Luke. Oh, great. He double counterattacked and killed Revan. That's beautiful. Malak does kill Commander Luke, though, and he now has two stacks. And Chewbacca is not looking so good either. There goes Chewbacca. Luckily, Han Solo hits like a truck, counteracts quite a bit. And now we have Chewie's Rage that finishes him off. What a great fight. It's awesome to see CLS kill a full Darth Revan team. Very, very nicely done. That's exciting. Thank you for watching another episode. I really appreciate all of the feedback I get, especially where I could have suggested a better choice. Um, I really hope people are learning a little bit from this. I hope you're finding something interesting. Take away something you can use in your own fights or share with your, your friends or your guild. So good luck to everybody in this final week of uh, Grand Arena Championships, and I'll talk to you next week.